On camera, June Foray. What was it like to find out after all these years how popular Rocky and Bullwinkle were? It's a lovely surprise. I, I started being surprised about four years ago, but now I'm not surprised anymore because it, it, is, it has become such a cult. And understandably, because of the, the brilliant satire, the mordant wit, the wonderful puns that you didn't get when you were a little kid, but you do now that you're an adult. Do you ever turn on the tube and watch Rocky and Bullwinkle? I watch it all the time, and we did so many segments that I, I really can't remember all of the dialogue or, or what happens, and I could look at it now without being subjective and say, oh, that's my voice up there. It's a boost of the squirrel. People have never people have never who've never seen what it's like to do voiceovers for cartoons. Can you describe what the atmosphere was like in the studio? It was wonderful. Howard, it was like going to a party every night. Uh, we would walk in, tell jokes, Bill Conrad, Paul Fries, Bill Scott, and I. Uh, and then we'd read the script, of course, which was hilarious, and we'd get fits of laughing. And then when we finally calmed down, we would record it. And uh, the pacing, of course, was so rapid that uh, we couldn't afford to, to uh, be lazy in any way in our reading. And um, everybody did so many different parts. You know, Rocky and Natasha would be talking to each other in the same breath. So I use different color pencils, and um, uh, if the only time we ever really repeated them is if we went over over 15, uh, 15 seconds over or something, you know, and then we'd have to do it again. Did it ever surprise you? People ask me the same question: What's it like when you see yourself on television? But what's it like for you when you see a cartoon character with your voice? Does it make you chuckle? Howard, I keep saying, what a hell of a terrific actress I am. <laughs> <laughs> and what will you be doing tonight for the folks here at the theater? I'm going to introduce uh, about 90 minutes of Bullwinkle Films, and I'm going to tell how I met Jay Ward, the producer, and, and talk about some of the times that we had recording, and about Edward Everett Horton, and Bill Scott, and, and uh, Paul, and, and Bill Conrad, of course, who was the announcer on it, who is now Jake, uh, the fat man, and Jake and the fat man, That's as right. you probably know. And uh, just a brief thumbnail description, what was Bullwinkle? He's an, an all-American hero, but who, who, who is Bullwinkle and who is Rocky? What did they represent? They represented goodwill in the world. Uh, they were always well-intentioned. Anytime anybody needed help, Rocky and Bullwinkle were there. Of course, uh, Bullwinkle screwed it up most of the time, but Rocky was that all-American uh, squirrel <laughs> out to help every Anything you think about the Boy Scout oath, that's what they were. Okay, we're just going to take a two-shot now, and then we'll do our... Uh one, two shot from... And so I'm making just as much or more money than I've ever made. It's wonderful. Mel Blanc was fun to work with? Yes. Yes, he was. I did about 70 Warner Brothers films with Mel. And he was the, the, char the character voice's character voice, wasn't he? I mean, he did yeah. so many. Yeah. Well, I was granny, of course. What'd she say about this whole thing? She'd say, I thought I'd never live to see the day that this would happen. Suckling succotash, it's granny. Okay, we want to. Uh, we got a little script here. You don't mind doing this? No, with me? not at all. Okay, Let's we're going to try okay. a little something now. Natasha, I heard Moose and Squirrel will be in Montreal tonight for a show. But Boris, darling, only Squirrel is here for appearance at comedy festival. Tell me, Natasha, you need Moose for act. Maybe we can ask Fearless Leader to find one. And now? Hey, Rocky, why don't you pull a rabbit out of my head? Yeah, but Bullwinkle, that trick hasn't worked since you first tried it in 1959. This time for sure. Nothing up my sleeve. Presto! Never mind. Tonight I'll have something I hope you'll really like. And I'm sure I will. Thank you very much. Thank you, Howard. Best of luck. Thank you so much. It's okay. You are good Boris, darling. Oh, thank you very much. Tete. Very good Boris. <laughs> started announcing it about the last night. Oh, just, how, just for interest's sake, how is your off mic now? What was the story with uh, how we got hired? Well, he, uh, Jay Ward, you can see.